Kevin asks, Do you have any advice about cutting through the noise to achieve a bird's eye view of the blockchain technology space as a whole? I spend every minute of my free time learning about new projects, new technologies, protocol improvements, consensus mechanisms, and I can barely keep up with a fraction of it all. As someone who spends much more time learning in the space than I do, how do you filter through it all? Do you recommend any sources in particular that do a great job at distilling the highlights of what's going on right now? Kevin, that's a great question. Um, and I know that for many people I serve as that source. You know, it's very difficult not only to keep up with the extremely rapid pace of change in our industry and our space. Um, but also to discern what is real and what is not. And you know, it's not simply a matter of um, the truth falling somewhere on a random curve or um, the news sources being randomly distributed. There are people out there who are actively trying to sell you something, and there is a lot of money floating around in this space, um, which has attracted a lot of unscrupulous people. So it's not just about um, keeping up. It's also about getting sources of information that are neutral, that don't have uh, an agenda. Or if they do have an agenda, it's an agenda based on some kind of principle, and and not an agenda simply based on personal enrichment and promotion. Right. So this is a big problem. There aren't that many neutral voices. Most people are trying to sell you something, and of course, there's a lot of companies that have now joined. Um, both. Uh, companies within our space, like startups, but also companies uh, from outside the space, traditional industries like financial companies, uh, insurance companies, banks, etc. They are all trying to push their own agenda. They are all trying to tell you, for example, that um, you know, we can continue to do business as usual with blockchain, and we don't really need any of this open, borderless, decentralized cryptocurrency shit. We can just do um, databases, and that's just as good. All we need to do is give complete power to the banks. Um, you know, so so there's all of these challenges. To me, the best approach for cutting through the noise is to go directly to the technology and to go to the source information. So I look at um, code and I use the code and try to understand what it does. Um, in addition to that, I read the developer mailing lists. I read the discussions on GitHub. I read the pull requests. I read various chat rooms, and not all of them are good anymore. You know, a lot of the very qualified developers um, have left many of the public chat rooms because of all of the noise that's happening there. Um, and uh, in order to get work done, they've gone to more private uh, forums. But you can still find a lot of good information online. So to me, the focus is always on the technology. If you go back to the technology and read about um, what the developers are doing, and also read what the code is doing, then you can get a direct perspective of what's actually happening in the space, rather than the marketing brochure or the agenda-driven series of talking points. Everdread asks about crypto book recommendations. Hi Andreas, in a recent interview you spoke about your passion for reading. I've already read and loved your book. So what else do you recommend in the crypto decentralization and tech space? Any sci-fi books about a distant crypto future? Thanks, Everdread. Um, you know, probably one of the most influential authors that I've read almost everything they've ever published, if not everything they've ever published, um, that has influenced my thinking a lot is a cyberpunk author called Cory Doctorow. Uh, Cory Doctorow has written a, a number of amazing books. I'm a huge fan, and uh, his latest book, Radicalized, uh, just came out. I've uh, uh, I haven't started reading it yet, but I've loved every single one of uh, his previous books, and they speak to this decentralized, autonomous, software-based, um, community-oriented, open-source future. Um, Cory Doctor is very strong in the areas of intellectual property and creative commons, for example, in defending uh, general-purpose computing and open computing, and in fighting back against. Uh, various forms of centralization and control. So, um, if you like all of those ideas, uh, that might be a good place to start. Uh, I certainly would recommend it.